I don't think anybody will have too much trouble with it. All right, what we'll do is we'll just go through and do uh, 9 through 12. We'll uh, try to work without a calculator, and then at some point, do I really care if you use a calculator? No. no. All right. Now, I am going to try to show you how you can, you know, do powers in your head quicker. All right, because I do think that's important, and I don't always want to use my calculator if I can just do it quickly. Um, but again, um, I, I do think almost everyone in here knows this. I'm pretty sure. All right. And um, the other thing, too, is, guys, you know, next week uh, I will be in Washington, D.C., right? So what's probably going to happen is you'll have some sub who's super nice, and we will probably, or maybe even it's another St. John's teacher, what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to assign the IXL on these topics that we did this week, all right? And then... Uh, I'll add some other topics that I think that, that are important, some of the geometry stuff that is just kind of review, try to keep you busy. And then listen, if I get a good report from the sub every day, then I'll try to add maybe like a quiz grade of 100 for everybody for their uh, quarter. All right. So, so again, it's important to do your work. All right. Is everybody with me on that? I don't want, because again, I don't know who's going to be in here. It might be a teacher, it might be a sub. You're not listening. All right, it's important to listen. All right? Because again, I, I, I don't, you know, the, the sub has a hard job, and, and I, I don't want them to say anything but nice things about you. And I'll assign some IXLs. You'll work the IXLs. Not going to assign much homework. I'll have enough IXLs that you can finish in class. What? Other than that, are we going to have any other um, tests? No. That's it. All right. That is good for some. Some of you guys who ended at a 90.01 or something like that. All right. So let's knock this out now. Again, here we go. So write each expression, expression using exponents. So remember, now an exponent is just how many times you're multiplying the same number. All right. So in this case, what would be the base? Who remembers what the base would be? The base would be the 2, of course. All right, so I want everybody to put two, then you just count how many twos there are. How many twos are there? So it would be just what? Two to the sixth power. All right, it will be written as two to the sixth. Now, here is where I'm going to try to show you now how you should be able to quickly tell me that two to the sixth is 64. That shouldn't be much of a thought. All right, and the reason why I say that is, come on, guys. Everybody should be able to count by twos. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. You can go to 128, 256, 512, 10, 24, 20, 48, 49, and 6. That's how much you should be able to count by twos. All right. So again, it just takes practice. I don't want every time you do two to the six to have to type in two to the six on the calculator. All right. But I am going to show you how to do that on the calculator. So everybody take out their calculator. All right. Now, you have different calculators, so you just have to pay attention, and you have to look on your calculator. I'm not walking around the room and showing you on your calculator. You are paying attention. All right. On some calculators, there is this button. There is a Y to the X. On some calculators, believe it or not, it can be written as X to the Y. On the blue calculators, it's this called carrot key, we say. All right, oh, those are generally your options. So I want everybody to type in two, and then you hit the carrot key, and then you hit six, and it should be able to tell you that that's what now? That's 64. So that's how you use your calculator as far as using exponents. Now remember, guys, some of you guys are interrupting, all right? And if you're interrupting, that takes up time. All right, I'd like to get some more work done. All right. Anybody have any questions on how to use the calculator? What? So we go two. Two. Then hit the, the carrot button. Two. No, I didn't say the X with well, the two on it. Shh. The carrot button on your calculator. You gotta actually look for it. Let me see your calculator. So yours has a Y to the X on it. Okay. <coughs> 
All right, so you hit 2, y to the x, and then 6, and then enter. There you go. You have to determine what type of calculator you have. All right? Everybody good on that? All right? So now, if we take a look at question number 2, all right, it doesn't matter if it's a number or a variable. Number 2, the correct answer would just be d to the what power? 6. d to the 6. All right, d to the 6. And again, guys, I'm totally okay with you just writing the answer down. All right, I'm totally okay with you writing the answer. All right, write organized. All right, skip lines. Try to be neater. All right, that's what we're focusing on also. All right. Now, I want to take a look now at question number three. All right, how many one-fourths are there? Three, and the one-fourths are what? Negative. Negative. So I need a parentheses here. Parentheses, negative one-fourth to the third power. That's what I need. Negative one-fourth to the third power. Negative. All right, now let's try it on the calculator. I want you to put a parentheses. All right, it's important to put the parentheses in. Parentheses, negative one-fourth, close parentheses to the third power. And it should come up as negative, negative one over 64. Negative 1 over 64. All right. Now, the next thing I want everybody to pay attention is, guys, please look up. Look up, look up, look up. Now, I, I would hope that you don't really need to put a negative in here, that you would automatically know the answer was going to be what anyway? Yeah. Negative. All right. How do I know it's negative? I know it's negative because there are how many negatives? There are three negatives, therefore the solution would be negative. So everybody with me on this? Come on, guys. I feel like you're not listening to me. All right? Now, is everybody okay with writing it as negative 1 over 64? And then I want you, well, negative 1 fourth to the third, which is the same as negative 1 over 64. Now, in the directions, it doesn't say. I'm just putting that up there because I want you to learn how to use your calculator. All right? Now let's take a look at number four. All right. So anybody want to help me with number four? What are you thinking? William. Uh, four times x to the third times x to the third. Right. Now something to the third power, generally we call it cubed. Or cubed. Right. So we could say 4m cubed, q cubed. All right, but saying something to the third power is perfectly acceptable as well. So now your job is to tell me if you don't know something. What? Why is it called cubes? Three dimensions. Right? Cubes. You measure volume in cubes with cubes. Three dimension is cubes. All right? Good? All right? All right, here we go. Number five, again, getting into some of more of the algebra, all right? We would just write that as parentheses y minus 3 cubed. Now, notice in the future, you will be able to expand this out, but it's not expanded to what you think, all right? That's the only answer. All right, that's the only answer for that. Yes? Why is it on the outside of what? Very good question. So let me show you why it's on the uh, outside of the prints. Very good, actually. If I wrote it like this, that would just mean that the 3 is cubed, not the whole thing. That's a very good question, actually. All right? So that's why we put parentheses, because the whole thing is being cubed. All right? Not just the 3. All right? So number 6, we would say what? A plus 1 to the what power? Squared. squared, yes. You can say second power or you can say squared. I prefer that you say squared. All right. And again, that's for two dimensions measuring area, measure area squared. Okay. All right, let's read a couple of the word problems. Let's see how tricky they are. Yes, I'm listening. Very good question also, William. Thank you very much for asking that. Here you go. Everybody look up. Everybody look up, look up, look up, look up. 
I'm going to give you a really good reason, William. Watch this. What is 3 minus 1 cubed? Can somebody tell me what 3 minus 1 cubed is? 8. 8. Very nice. Thank you. Notice, William, it is not 3 cubed minus 1 cubed. That would be 26. Do you understand me now? Yeah. Right. In the future, I will show you how to expand that next year. All right. We're going to learn how to expand that. All right, but right now we don't have the ability to expand that. That's really algebra one problem, okay? So right now we're just working on just making sure we understand exponents. Good with that? Yeah. That was a great question. All right, here we go. Now, uh, number seven. The longhorn beetle can have a body length of more than two to the fourth centimeters. All right, two to the fourth. Let's count. Ready? Two. Four. No. Eight. Eight, 16. 16. Yes, two, four, eight, 16. Now I'm stopping at 16 because that's what the question is. It's asking for two to the fourth. I don't need to do two to the fourth on a calculator. I don't need to do two to the fourth on a calculator. We just automatically know it's what? 16. And again, we're going to put 16, the units, centimeters, 16 centimeters. All right, here we go. Theo sends an email to three friends. Each friend forwards the email to three friends. Each of those friends forwards to three friends, and so on. Write the number of emails sent during the fifth stage. So does anybody want to tell me how many friends there would be sent to? You should be able to tell me that's obviously 243 friends, right? Everybody knew that? Right. Obviously, 243, right? Now, how do we get that? I'll show you how we got that. You start out with what? Three. And then those friends send it to three friends. And then those friends send it to three friends. And then those friends send it to three friends. And those friends send it to three friends. All right? So, guess what? Three times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is? 243. 243, because you know I would be what? You know I'd be correct. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. All right. So everybody, of course, knows 3 to the 5th is 243. Now let me show you how simple that is to do in your head. Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. All right, watch how simple. What's 3 times 3? Nine. 3 times 3? Nine. 9 times 9? So now I'm just asking what is 81 times 3? 8 times 3 is 24. Yeah, 243. It's not really that hard to do that. Generally, when you're raising something to a power, generally what we do is we collect them in terms of 2. All right, not all the time, but some of the time it's easy to do that. All right? Everybody good with that? Yes. All right? Okay, so now let's check out our mental math here for number nine. All right, what is A? Three. No calculators. Put your calculators away. All right, so this is three to the third plus two. What is three to the third? 29. Oh, wait, well, 27. 27, and then plus two is what? Now, listen, guys, I want everybody to be able to do that. Three to the third. Three times three times three. That's not a difficult thing. I'm not even asking you to show the work on that. I'm just saying you should be able to look at that and tell me it's 29. And that's what we're working on. All right, and I want a calculator. I want you to do your mental math. All right, so now we're going to check out number 10. I want everybody to take a quick, quick look at number 10 using mental math, and we'll see if we can do it. Mr. Strickland, did you tell me yet? Uh, William. Seven o'clock. How did you get that? Um, I got it. Shh, shh, shh. Because when you first do you say four minus one. And that is what? That's negative five. And then? You do shh, shh. negative five to the second power. You're awesome, William. And that gives you 
Positive 25. You're amazing. William, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is very, very, very good. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So here we go. So listen, a brilliant question, and I'm glad you asked me that, okay? And I need, I need to show everybody this because, listen, on a standardized test, this is normally what they put. All right, so stop what you're doing. Stop trying to get through the problems. Look up here on the board so I can teach you something. I don't care about getting all the problems done. All right, I'm about ready to make you close your iPads. So you listen. All right, I mean it. Look up so I can show you something. All right, this is a common question on an SAT or ERB because they know kids just make careless mistakes on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this and you tell me, if I said to you, what is negative 2 squared? The average person would say what? Negative 4. And what's the correct answer? 4. Anyway, who thinks it's positive 4? Go ahead, raise your hand. All right, who thinks it's negative 4? Raise your hands. So who just are just raising hands just because they don't know? All right, that's good. I like the honesty there. All right, so here we go. All right, negative 2 squared is negative 4. It is negative 4. The reason why I'm teaching you something, that's why you have to listen. Put your hand down. And you're going to go, oh, that makes sense. This is saying the opposite of 2 squared. What's 2 squared? What's the opposite of 4? Negative 4. Now, if I did this, this is where if you're paying attention, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. If I did this, what's the answer now? Uh, positive. positive four, because that means negative two. I am. You, you're not, because you, it's just amazing to me. Just amazing to me. Just listen. I'm trying to explain it. Look at your calculator. Type in on your calculator, negative 2, and some calculators actually do it incorrectly. Type in negative 2, I'll put in parentheses, and then square. And what does it say? Because why? It's not over your head. You act like it's over your head. Why is it? Put your hand down. I just told you. I just told you. What does this mean right here, Austin? I'm frustrated with you because you make good grades and you're not listening. You're not. What does this mean right here? What does that mean? No. Yeah, negative 2. What am I doing to the negative 2? No, I'm squaring it. So what does that mean? I'm multiplying negative 2 times negative 2. Don't tell me you don't understand that. That's exactly what that means, don't you agree? Something squared means this times itself twice. That's what that means. That is not what that is saying. That is saying you do the two squared first and then you do the opposite because it's kind of, put your hand down, it's kind of like order of operation. If I said to you to this, if I said this, one minus two squared, what's that answer, Austin? Just tell me the answer. Three. What type of three? Positive. Why? Because you did that. So what is that? What is it? I'll let oh. you know when you get it. Tell me negative, what the answer is. All I'm asking is, what is the answer? I just want you to tell me what the answer What's the answer to 1 minus 2 squared? How did you get that? Listen, listen to me. I want to tell you something. I don't want you upset with me. I, I don't. I, I want you learning. This is what you're doing, right? So, so just relax for a second. Don't be upset. What is two squared? Uh, two times three. Which is? Which is uh, four. What's one minus four? Three. One minus four. Uh, one minus four. Yeah. See, you're you're. you're I I. I fussed at you. I'm going to fuss at you for 
Two years. You understand that? Because you're smart. I'm trying to make you even smarter. Right? I can't let you sit there and veg out. You understand me, right? So when I fuss at you, come on, man. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to fuss at you for a long time. All right? So that's negative three. Stop and listen. Leave them alone. All right? Now I'm trying to get you to understand. Why did that come out to be negative three? Because what did you do first? You did the exponent. What's two squared? Is four. What's two squared? You do that first. Then you make it a what? Yes. Over here, what do I do? This is different because it's in a what? That's all I'm trying to tell you. That's it. That's all there is to it. If it's in parentheses, the negative belongs. If it's not in parentheses, the negative does not belong. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right? Now look, some of you guys got your eyes on your eyes. Just everybody, put your iPads up. Put them up. You're not allowed to use them anymore. Put them up. Put them up. Put them up. All right, I see some of you think you guys are doing what you're supposed to be doing. What number am I on? Ten. ten. You should be on number ten. Not on number twenty. Not on number fifty. And you'll learn something, all right? If you're working ahead, you're not hearing me with my explanation. And I'm probably going to change the assignment anyway. So rushing through, I promise you, put your hands down when I'm talking. I don't care. When I'm talking, put your hand down. I'm still talking. Put your hand down. I'll, I promise you, William, I'm going to take great care of you. I'm trying to tell you something. You can't listen with your hand up thinking about what you're saying. It's way more important to listen to what I'm saying than to try to get through the homework. I promise you, it's much more important. I'm going to teach you much better math while you're listening to me. All right, so I can show you how to do the mental math. All right, and just like right here, Austin didn't we clear something up that makes perfectly good sense. Even though I fussed at him, all right, it's not the end of the world. We got it done. We got it taken care of. Now he knows something. All right, why are you talking to him? All right, now, anybody have any doubts about why that is 75 now? William. Oh, I didn't see the blue. There's, what are, I didn't see the blue. Join us. What was your question? Um, I was just going to say if it was a negative with a parentheses around it, and it was a power of like... Which three. number are we doing? Ten. Ten. Okay, so what are you asking? Ten. Because why? We let B be negative four, right? Mm -hmm. Negative four minus one squared. What's the problem? They just had your, you're waving at me? All right. All right, here we go. Number 11. Let's everybody try number 11. All right. Now, why do I say it's okay to use a calculator? Because do I really care about who knows that 3.5 squared is 12.25? Right, 12.25. I can show you how to do that in your head a little quicker too. All right. But I don't care about that. Does everybody understand that? All right. So the important part, though, is you're going to make a mistake if, so type that into the calculator and then tell me what your answer is. And hopefully you're not going to tell me the wrong answer, but I have a feeling somebody's going to tell me the wrong answer. What would you get? Uh, negative 3.75. Tell them the right answer. Mm -hmm. That's negative 7. Tell them the right answer. Negative 3. Tell them the right answer. What? Tell them, please. I'm very proud of you. That's a great job. Great job. Say that again. 28.25. The only reason he has the right answer is because he listened the whole time. I think. Not 100% for sure, but because he listened. Any number that is a negative... When you square it, it should end up as a what? A negative. A negative. A positive. A positive. A positive. A po no. So it's a positive. So those of you guys who just typed it on the calculator, and I'm telling you, 
Mr. Strickland, everybody, listen to me. I'm trying to teach you how to use your calculator. And if you're not listening to me now, you're not going to understand your calculator. Does everybody hear me? You're just not. You think you do, but guess what? You don't. If you tell the calculator to do negative 4 squared, what's it going to tell me? The answer is. What's it going to tell me? Everybody type in negative 4 and then just hit the square oh, button. It's going to tell me it's 4. Is it negative 16? No, it is positive 16. Now, hear me on this now, please. Uh, Mr. Davis, are you listening to me? I'm not sure. Everybody, look at me. Look at me. Listen. Oscar, that's you. I said, look at me. So I know you're listening. If you're focused on your iPad or your calculator, you're not listening. Anytime you square a negative, it's automatically a what? So do I have to type in the negatives when I square them? You do not. Listen to me. Again, that'll save you a whole bunch of time and a whole lot of misery and a whole lot of wrong answers if you understand me. A negative to an even power is always going to be what? So do I even have to plug in the negative? If you plug in the negative without putting parentheses, the answer is going to be what? Wrong. Thank you. The answer is going to be wrong. So now let's type this into the calculator correctly. 3.5 squared plus what else squared? What else am I going to put in squared? 4 squared. Then you don't have to worry about it. Then the answer now is what? 28.25. Now you've learned how to use your calculator. Now you understand what I'm saying. See, it's simple. Be patient with me. I'm trying to be patient with everybody in here. Why? Right? Sometimes I don't feel like you're being patient with me. That's why I pressed that. You understand? Um, All right, good. I multiply 3.5 by 2. You don't multiply 3.5 by 2. I know. You square it. There's a difference between multiplying by 2 and squaring. You understand me now? All right, and I'm just begging you. If you are just writing down the answers without doing it on your calculator, I promise you when you take the next test, you're going to bomb it. Because you're supposed to be able to use your what? Calculator. And people think they know how to use your calculator. Guess what? They don't. All right, super important, super important. All right, so now let's try number 12. Let's try number 12, all right? Now, when you cube a negative, you still get a what? Um, negative, because a negative times a negative times a negative is a what? Negative. <laughs> you even said negative, yes. So a negative to an odd power is always what? Negative. negative. Does it matter how you type it in on your calculator then? No. No, you're going to get the right answer. The one that's a problem is when you raise it to an even power. When you raise it to an even power, you don't need to put in the negative, or you have to take the time to put parentheses around. So I'm not even, I don't even know, but I want everybody in here to type this in on their calculator. 4 times C minus 7 plus B cubed. All right, and tell me what that is. I'm listening. Come on, quickly. 4 times C minus 7 plus B cubed. It's negative, say it again. Negative 50. Anybody else get negative 50? What'd you get? Negative 57. Negative 57. Negative 57, negative 50. So, so now, don't, don't be upset. Just go do it again. 4 times what? 3.5. Minus? 7. Plus? Negative 5. And then carrot 3. Negative 57. There you go. All right, are you good? Everybody's got to be good with the calculator. Now, come on, guys. Please listen. All right, go. Tell me. I got 70. Okay, so let's just try it again, honestly. And it's okay to get the wrong answer. That's why it's better. Tell me when you get a wrong answer so we can review. Four times, what's the C? Three. Minus seven plus negative four carat three, or y to the x, whatever yours is. And then it equals. 
Oh, sometimes at the end you have to hit the equal button. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that helps. That does help. That one, that really does help. Yes. Yeah. Go. So, I'm listening. I got three. Beautiful. Then we're all happy. Truth, happy. All right. Today I thought was a very good day because it, it honestly, understanding your calculator is a big, big deal. All right. So, um, what time do we got here, guys? All right, we got five minutes. So here's what I'm going to do, guys. Um, I really don't care about 25 and 26, so you can cross those out. Um, and here's what I want to do for you guys. Um, I think because you guys really listen to me, I feel like pretty good about your calculator now. Um, let's just stick with the what tonight. Odds. Now, with the condition that you have to do what to every odd, check the answer, please. All right, I'll post the answers. The solution's not posted yet, but I will post. All right, I'll post those. Yes. What did I say? What did I say? 25 and 26, I crossed them out. And then at the, at the top, I said, I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to do the odds under the condition that you do what? You see, that's why I'm saying you're not listening. You don't. No, you didn't. I asked you a question. All right? Do the odds. Check the odds. All right? Everybody get to work right now. Get to work. All right?